Hey everybody. You saw me working on this 1969 custom 10XL known as Walt, Walter. Walter. And you know the ignition switch was no good. Saw the sparks. So, what I'm going to do, since I already found one on Stens, I'm going to disassemble this. So, this is a learning experience and a how-to video because when I, I just for the heck of it I just thought how to disassemble ignition switch for one of these and no nobody has one so there's going to be one now and I'm going to be the first one to put one up I don't know how they come apart, but I was always curious what they look like inside anyway, and I can't break it, it's already broke. And if you have an ignition switch like this, I'll give you the part number later on if I remember all right I'll give me the part number right now the Sears part number is 7486H And there's probably different numbers too, but it's the same switch in the Sears. The Stens number is 430-520. And it's under a different tractor name. But I went online and I looked and it's the same exact switch. So... That being said, it's nice. huh? I'll look at my catalog and I'll tell you what tractor that's listed under. And here it is in the Stents catalog. It's under Snapper, but it is the same ignition switch so there you go and I'm curious as I am, what one of these things look like inside. And who knows? Heck, maybe I can fix this one. I doubt it. These are all the sparks and all the smoke. It's probably all burned up inside. Besides, there's a spring in here, and me and springs don't get along when I take something apart.
So that's what it looks like inside. Pause. That's what one looks like inside. Okay, I got this this housing cleaned out as much as I could. Can't really get down where I assume these ball bearings go wherever those ball bearings went. Oh, there they are. Okay, oops. Shit. Okay. So as I learn, you will learn. And just follow what I'm doing. Looks like you're going to need one of these, you know, Harbor Freight special things. I'm just, I'm just scraping out all this rust. Best I can. Maybe if I had a Q-tip with and wrapped it in sandpaper, I suppose I could get this much better. So maybe you want to try that if you decide to do this. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I've never done this before, and usually when I take something apart, it usually fails anyway. That's how confident I am in some of my work. But if I get it to work, that would be awesome. Because all this cost you is time. And some of these switches are pretty pricey. This one from Stens is just over $13, so I'm just going to buy another one. Anyway, I'm just doing this for fun, because I like to explore. And if it's, especially if it's broke, I can, doesn't matter. It's broke. It doesn't work, so... Screw it, might as well take it apart, see what it's made of. Wow, 
Well, that didn't come out too bad. I'm happy with that, Marty would say. Okay, down in this hole, there is this. O-ring. Okay, and it is, if you look very closely, you see how one end is wider, it kind of goes like into a cone. I'll say it like that. It goes into a cone. So, your wide end is here. Your skinny end is here. So, it goes like this. You saunt it? Okay. It goes in. This is the wide part. This is the wide part. This is the smaller side. It goes in like that. Wide south, wide side up. Like so. You saunt it. It's very thin. very delicate and if you lose it I bet yeah, I'm gonna guess you're screwed because I did drop it and I said oh dick so, put that down in there and I believe what that is it is a seal to keep water out that is my guess of what that is. Alright. Now I'm going to sand this part. Clean that all up. going to stop the video now I'm going to clean this up and then we'll start back okay I've got everything all cleaned up as you can see it looks much gooder Do you remember how crusty this was Remember this one, how nasty that was. All cleaned up, except for that side. No need for that side. The connectors. Remember how beat up that was? How nasty looking that was. Nice and clean. Even did these. Not too bad. The spring here was pretty rusty. I'll clean that up. The ball bearings. They were rusty. I'm not even going to take those out because I don't want to lose them. I've dropped them a bunch of too many times to count already on the ground. And if I didn't have my glasses on, I wouldn't be able to find them. So if you lose any of these parts, just throw it away. You're done. So I'm going to put this back together and show you 
how everything goes back because I've already put it together because I couldn't figure out how that spring went in and I figured it out so uh, let me zoom in on ya and I hope that will be good enough for you hopefully my hands won't be in the way too much Okay, first things first, you saw it, how hard it was to get this piece out, right? That's because there's a couple places where these are where you can't get a screwdriver and pound it. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do now to get that piece back in there better, easier. I don't know why. I can't get that little speck out of there. Right. You're gonna need yourself a crescent wrench. What you're gonna do Put it on the edge and bend it out all the way around. Right. I'm going to do a test fit here, if I can get it in there, oh yeah, that goes in there, see, see how easy that is, alright, probably didn't need to go out as much as I did. this to go like this where it springs back you need okay this it doesn't matter it's going to be the same both either way but if you look closely you can see the end of the spring going that way and the end of this this side is going that way right so it doesn't matter which way it goes in here so what you need to do now right 
that's what's going to give your spring back. Put this spring in the housing here. Like so. Okay. Now you have this part here. You're going to put that, this end of the spring, on this side. Okay. And I might as well show you this. Here are your O-rings. Wide side, down, narrow side. Right. Wide side towards the plastic. Narrow side goes down in the hole. Okay, this is what's tricky. Stick that in there find where it's at. I, I can't show you this so because I you, I can't see it once I put this in here. Now remember there's the end that needs to go here so you put this put it in like that right so you can see already you're getting it but what's happening is it's hitting this part is hitting this string so what you have to do is put it in and kind of lift it up over that spring and then bring it over It's tricky. Because believe me, there's nobody doing this. There's a machine doing this shit. Get yourself a needle nose pliers if you need. Oh, see, didn't work. Try it again. No, I've already done this. Oh, try again. Hey. Right. Thank you.
Don't give up. Keep trying. You'll get it. There we go. There we go. All right. Now once you get to this part, hold it. Don't let go. Do not let go. You're going to start over. Next thing you need is your ball bearings. Okay. Stick a ball bearing in there. Go to the other side. Stick your ball bearing in. Now you have these caps here right and they're kind of like those rubber pieces one end is bigger than the other the smaller end goes in first stick that in grab the other one stick that in Grab your two little springs. They go in there. Same with the other side. Come in. Okay. As you can see, you got these things here, and they go there and there. And you can see where the springs were. So they lay right on top. This copper thing is different on both sides. So when you take it apart, pay attention. I had to go back and watch the video to see how it came out. And your reference would be that slot there. where it goes into that piece there when I took it apart it kind of was like this so that leads me to believe it was in like this and you can see both sides are different and I didn't even realize that before as the side with the circle is much wider than the other side and this has more of a slope to it so pay attention to that all right we're almost there next is this now you have this little cut away the slot you need to find where that goes and that's right here But I could be wrong. Okay, 
now. Probably the hardest part is you need to tap all that back around this thing to hold this in place. Okay. So once you get it down in there, I actually, I, off camera, I push a couple of these in. But, uh, get yourself a C-clamp. Because you need a third hand to clamp that down in. And what you need is you're going to need something like this. Um, I can't remember what they're called. They look like punches, but maybe it is a punch, I don't know. So then I'm just going to go around and tap these back in. don't have to hit hard, just tap on it. Oh. And believe it or not, I learned this doing this in high school. In jewelry design. That's how you set your stones. Now I gotta take this off and move it. And I'm keeping it on there just for, just because I'm still ha I'm still hammering on it. So And this part here is really important. You have to get this onto this. That is your ground. You must.
I'm happy with that, Marty would say. <clears throat> okay, let's see if it works. Oh. It don't work. Well, we gave it a shot, right? Well, if you're bored someday, maybe you, uh, maybe you'll try it. Maybe you'll get it to work. For some reason, it doesn't want to spring back. So, I am going to take this apart again and try it again. So if I get it to work, I will show you. <laughs> I got it back together. So now, the real test, does it work on the trapper? I guess we'll have to find out. I have to put it in, right? So I'm going to do that and we will come back with you later.